All right, uh, in this lesson, we are going to be looking at something called completing the square. Uh, before we do that, we're just going to review the algebra tiles. Uh, this first algebra tile is the positive x squared tile. The second algebra tile, the large white square, is the negative x squared. Uh, the green rectangle is the positive x or the positive variable tile. And the white rectangle is negative x or the negative variable tile. And the small red uh, square is a negative integer, negative one, or positive one. And the white small square is the integer negative one. We'll be using those algebra tiles soon. Uh, what is completing the square? Completing the square is an algebraic process by which we go from the standard form of a quadratic function to the vertex form of a quadratic function. So that process, going from the standard form to the vertex form, is called completing the square. And you will see uh, that at some point in this process, we have to do the process of completing the square. Uh, what you may notice in the vertex form, or may not notice, uh, is that there is a binomial squared here. This x minus p squared is a binomial squared. So for example, when we factored uh, earlier, this here is represented by, or could be represented by, x squared minus 6x plus 9. When we factored this, we noticed or created a, an area with it. Uh, we noticed that this is x minus 3 times x minus 3. Or in other words, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equivalent to x minus 3 squared. This here is considered a completed square. What we're going to look at now is a more difficult example. And here it is. All right, we're being asked to complete the square using algebra tiles, and the quadratic function we're looking at in standard form is y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 5. And I'm going to be ste uh, stealing tiles from the tile bin. Uh, if I want to represent x squared minus 6x plus 5, here's what I do. Here's x squared. Here are negative 6x tiles. And here are positive 5 integer tiles. Now what completing the square does is, or what it's asking us to do, is to create, whoops, that's one too many, <clears throat> is to create a square with the x squared tile and the variable tiles. So if I set it up something like this so that you can kind of identify what that is, here is the beginnings of a completed square. This is x squared minus 6x. Now you need to ask yourself, what needs to be placed here? What integer tiles need to be placed here in order to complete this square? And in this case, it is positive 9, because negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Uh, what I'm going to do is steal positive 9 integer chips from our tile bin. Uh, in order to do this, I'm not allowed to just uh, add positive 9 tile chips without changing the value of the expression. Uh, so in order to be allowed to do this, what I have to do is actually add negative 9 tile chips. That won't change the expression. So after I add these 9 positive tile chips, I'll be adding 9 negative tile chips. And I'll show you uh, how that interacts with this problem here. All right, so what I've done right now is completed the square, but I'm not allowed to do that without adding negative 9 integer chips. All right, uh, so this completed square, as you can see from uh, the previous example, this completed square would be x minus 3 
squared. But we have all of this extra stuff over here, so we just need to simplify it. In order to do that, we can see that we have a number of zero pairs. In fact, there are a total of five zero pairs. Uh, when we get rid of those zero pairs, you can see that we're left with negative four. So this completed square is y is equal to x minus 3 squared minus 4. Now as far as algebraically speaking, this process looks identical just without pictures. So let me show you what we just did without algebra tiles. Uh, if I was asked to complete the square on y is equal to x squared uh, minus 6x plus 5, what I did was take the x squareds and the algebra uh, and the negative 6x variables and I needed to complete the square. Oops. So what I did was I added and subtracted 9 from the expression. That doesn't change the value. And what you can see is this trinomial here created our square. In other words, that trinomial is x minus 3 squared, and then this part here, when we simplified it, became minus 4. So there's our completed square. Now what we'll look at is a more difficult algebraic example. This one here. It's always a little bit more difficult to complete the square when you have a coefficient a on the x squared term. But I'll show you the process. Uh, the first thing we need to do to create this perfect square, or to complete the square, is to divide a, or factor a, out of the x squared and the x term. So when I factor 2 out of 2x squared and 16x, I'm left with x squared plus 8x. Do not factor it out of the constant term. Uh, the next step is we need to complete the square. In other words, we need to add and subtract some value in order to complete the square. Uh, that value in this case will be half of 8. You can picture this if you'd like with algebra tiles. Uh, half of 8 squared, which is going to be 4 times 4, which is 16. So that's going to create our perfect square. Uh, before we can make a trinomial, we need to remove this from that inside factor. And he needs to be multiplied by 2 in order to remove him from that factor. So we have 2 times x squared plus 8x plus 16. And that red uh, circled factor becomes negative 32 outside of the brackets. And when we simplify and complete this square, we're left with y is equal to 2. This perfect square here is actually x plus 4 squared. And when we simplify this, it's minus 37. And there is our completed square.